Seven marks, sketching, quadratic question. Question like this can be coming up at the end of your paper, so you can't be fumbling in it. And it would be in a non-calculator paper. So it says sketch 3x squared plus 9x minus 7, indicating its turning point and the intersections with the coordinate axes. So before we get into the algebra behind things, let's just remind ourselves, you know, what does a quadratic even look like? Quadratic would look something like this. It's a positive quadratic. So what do we mean by the turning point? We mean the point in which it changes from going down to up. Here, to find this, we would complete the square. Then we've got the roots. The roots are always when y is zero, okay? So you'd make this equal zero, and potentially you could be factorizing, but I always do this bit first because then we can very easily find the roots. I'll show you how. The other thing is the y-intercept. Now the y-intercept technically is when x is zero because all coordinates on the y-axis have an x-coordinate of zero. But the quickest way to find the y-intercept is just read the number that doesn't have an x next to it. Because if you make x equals zero, you're just going to be left with the constant. So I can very quickly say that the y-intercept for a mark is minus seven. Okay, that's the constant. Cool. Now, let's uh, complete the square. So, which actually I've basically indicated that correctly, right? That looks like minus seven, but let's complete the square. So, this is why it's gonna be worth so many marks is because we have to complete the square where the coefficient of x squared is not one. But what do we need to do first then? So completing the square, we're gonna factorize out the coefficient from the first two terms because when we complete the square, it's only ever to the first two terms. That constant does nothing, okay? So we're gonna get y is three lots of, now I use a square bracket here so that we don't have double circular brackets. So you're gonna divide both of these terms by three. We're gonna get x squared plus three x. And then we have the minus seven at the end. And this is gonna be a tough completing the square because this is not even. So let's do it. So we have y is three, lots of, then we open a circular bracket. So we have x squared. Now you always half the coefficient of x when completing the square. Now when you half that, a lot of students write 1.5, but in a non-calculated paper, work with fractions. Fraction. So when you half that, we don't write 1.5, we just say 3 over 2. Be a bit lazy here. Mathematicians in general are very lazy people, okay? Squaring this is much easier than squaring 1.5. So we're always going to minus that number squared. When you square the fraction, you just square the top and the bottom. 3 squared, 9, 2 squared, quattro. Close that bracket, minus 7. Then we're just going to expand this out. So we get y is three lots of this bracket. Now remember, you can't multiply the three into the bracket because of bin mass, yeah? The bracket is protecting what's on the inside. Minus three times this. Now when you do three times a fraction, three multiplies with the numerator. So nine times three, 27 over four. Minus seven. Now we're obviously gonna combine it, right? So I'm gonna write this as seven over one. I'm going to times top and bottom by quattro. 7 times 4 is 28, divided by 1 times 4 is 4. Okay, so simplifying that, we get 3x plus 3 over 2 squared. You have to do minus 27 minus 28. You could just do 27 plus 28 and then just make it negative, uh, which would be what, 55, right? Yes, so minus 55 over four. Now with that, how do we find the turning point? I'm gonna write it here as part of like our found information. So the turning point is to do the transformations of the graph, like the f of x plus, uh, f of x plus one and all that stuff. So for example, f of x plus one shifts the graph to the left by one. x plus three over two would shift to the left by three over two. So you always make this number negative, yeah, to get the x coordinate, so it'll be minus three over two comma, whatever that number is, which is minus 55 over four. So 
we have minus 55 over 4. That's my turning point. Okay? Now we need to find the roots. And this is again why this is a very tough non-calculator paper. Because this is not going to give us nice numbers. It does not factorize. This will not factorize. So this is why I always do this first. Because we can use this to find the roots. Because remember, I indicated it right at the beginning to find the roots, we make y equals 0. So we're going to make y equals 0, and we're going to rearrange. So uh, let's do that. I'm just going to rewrite the completed square up here. Then I'm going to rub the rest out. So for the root or roots, we're going to have 3 lots of x plus 3 over 2 squared minus 55 over 4 is 0. Now, potentially a question like this could even be 8 marks in the exam because of how tricky the algebra is here. So to rearrange your x, the first thing we're going to do is going to move this to the other side. So we get 3x plus 3 over 2 squared is 55 over 4. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to divide by this uh, coefficient. Yeah? Now, when you divide by 3, or if we remember, when we multiply by 3, we would multiply the numerator. When we divide by 3, it goes to the denominator. It's going to join that 4 and make it 12. So we get x plus 3 over 2 squared is 55 over 12. Now we need to square root both sides. So when we square root, remember you're going to get positive and negative. So we get x plus 3 over 2 is positive negative root of 55 over 12. Now some exams will allow you to just leave your answer like this. And I've seen many exam mark schemes. I think one of the answers was root of 7 over 2 and they just left it like that. They didn't rationalize the denominator. But I think for us, we might as well practice doing that process. Okay. So how would we simplify this third? Well, I would think about the 12. 55 has no square numbers that go into it. But 12 does. So it'll be 55 over 12, which is 4 times 3. Okay? So if we break that up, we get plus minus root of 55 divided by root of 4, which is 2. Then we'll have root of 3. Okay? And now we can rationalize that by times in top and bottom by root 3. Okay? Root 3 times root 3 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. So we get plus or minus uh, in the denominator, we have 6. Then here we have root of 55 times root 3. We do 55 times 3, which is 165. Okay, that was equal to this. Then we're going to move the 3 over 2. Uh, I'm going to write over here. So x is, the positive on the other side will be negative. So it'll be negative 3 over 2 plus or minus root of 165 over 6. And now you may be wondering, yo, Neil, bruv, how do I know if that is positive or negative? How can I draw this quadratic? I got you. Let me show you how it's done, Mike. It's super simple. You don't even need to think about it. Don't sweat it. There's a reason why I did all these in this order. So, draw your axes. However big you want to do it. Plot these two first. Put a cross at minus 7. And put a cross here. Minus 1.5, minus 55 over 4. Now, minus 55 over 4 is going to be lower than minus 7. I mean, you could work it out. You could say how many 55s, how many 4s go into 55? 4 goes into 5 once with a remainder of 1, 4 goes into 15 three times, and then it has remainders, right? And that's the negative, so it's me somewhere down here, okay? So somewhere here. So this is my minus 3 over 2, minus 55 over 4. And this is enough to know if something is positive or negative, because remember, we have that U shape, don't we? So start drawing that U. Okay? Mate, 
Look, so right, innit? Now, you know there's one negative root and one positive root. The negative root is obviously going to be this minus this. So we have minus 3 over 2 minus root 165 over 6. And then this one is minus 3 over 2 plus root 165 over 6. And that is our diagram or our quadratic drawn. And yeah, this is probably the hardest question they could possibly ask on this. The maximum I've seen for this is seven, but I think in terms of the difficulty I've given you, I would probably say this is more like eight marks because we had to do some rationalizing if they required it. Um, you could even bring this together if you wanted to, but I think this is uh, a good answer. But yeah, guys, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content. And if you're interested in my full maths courses, then check the link in the description. I'll see you guys in the next one. Nice.